What's up guys? This is Matt with MDC Diesel. In front of me I've got an S300 turbocharger that we have cut in half. Um, that way we can see the internal workings of it so we can see the oil galleys, the bearings, the seals, etc. Today what I want to talk about is oil inside the turbine and in the compressor housing of the turbocharger and what may cause that. Okay, let's get into it. We're going to start from front to back on this turbocharger, um, going over what components are what and what they do. So this is the compressor wheel. Obviously it draws in air, compresses the, the air and forces it into your engine. Um, one of the most crucial pieces of this turbocharger. That is attached to a shaft, as you see here, that goes all the way through the turbocharger and it attaches to the turbine. Right behind that, we've got a oil seal. It looks like a little hockey puck like this. And it's got a little deal like this with a piston ring type set up on it. And that just pops in there. Something like that. And that sits right in there with the shaft. There's an O-ring that sits there as well that's not on this model because that doesn't really stick on there. But anyhow, right behind that, we've got a 360 degree thrust bearing. This one's made out of steel. Some of them are brass. It really doesn't matter. They function the same. They just, some are a little bit tougher than others. Um, right behind that, we've got this little oil shield that actually goes between the oil seal and the, the 360 thrust. Um, and what that does is just directs the oil flow once it leaves the, the thrust bearing. From there, we've got a carrier bearing and another carrier bearing. There's usually two little C-clips that hold each of these in. Um, this model doesn't hold the clips in there, so they're not in there. And then the last piece behind there is the rear oil seal. That's also a piston ring type material. It's just made out of metal. Um, it's not rubber or anything like that. So what we see very commonly on these whenever people install them um, with a new turbocharger kit that some things may be installed incorrectly or there may be an issue with the truck that causes oil to push into the turbine. Um, it also sometimes causes oil to be pushed into the compressor cover. So um, we're gonna go over some of the issues that we see most commonly, and hopefully this will help you diagnose your issue. So first of all, oil pressure comes in here under pressure from the engine, feeds through this galley into the thrust bearing, that galley into this carrier bearing, and that galley into that carrier bearing. Right here, it is all under pressure, whatever the PSI the engine's putting out into your oil feed line. It's pushing into these bearings, obviously putting oil pressure around these bearings so that they can glide on oil and not rub metal to metal. And then from there, it free falls down into the drain. This is where your oil drain line would attach. It's right down here. So basically it's under pressure here, pressure here, and then it's free fall all the way down. It's gravity fed out the oil drain. The reason this is important to note is a lot of people have oil drain systems that are inadequately sized. They're too small of a diameter. They don't allow enough flow through them. Um, or they may have the drain where it goes horizontal instead of going vertical. The oil cannot flow uphill. It cannot flow horizontally. Uh, it has to go straight downhill because it's gravity fed. So first and foremost, if you just installed a brand new turbocharger and you've got oil coming into your turbine, check the oil drain. That is the number one cause we see of oil in the turbine right after a brand new install. So if you've ruled out the oil drain as the issue, um, meaning there's no kinks, there's no abnormal bends, the oil doesn't have to flow uphill, it doesn't have to flow horizontal, it's completely vertical, you know it's adequately sized, you know there's no blockage in it, there's nothing, you know, obviously blocking that drain up, um, then we can move to diagnosing the next step or the, the next most common cause we see after a new turbocharger install, which is crankcase pressure. Crankcase pressure is basically whenever pressure gets past the piston rings and pressurizes the engine. Um, every engine, brand new or not, has crankcase pressure to some degree. Obviously, the more worn out the engine, the more there's going to be. Um, regardless, there has to be some sort of ventilation system on the truck. Most newer vehicles have ventilation that feeds into the front of the intake, so the oil gets sucked in um, through the front over here from the crankcase vent and all that air pressure comes in through the front, just gets sucked up, not a big deal. That's probably actually one of the best ways because it provides negative suction against it, vacuum on it. Um, and what that does is it prevents any pressure from building up in the oil drain, um, which leads me to the point of what happens when your crankcase vent is not ventila ventilating properly. Um, so if you've got uh, a excessive blow by or the vent is not venting correctly, um, that pressure builds up into this oil drain and it will push that oil back up and not let it drain properly. Since this is just gravity fed, it's not under pressure. That air pressure will literally push it back up. It'll pull up in here and then eventually it'll push out the seals. Um, so you need to make sure that your crankcase vent is venting properly. If you have a newer truck and you have it rerouted to the atmosphere, 
make sure you remove your crankcase vent filter. That filter was intended specifically to collect contaminants from the oil system before it comes into the intake of the turbocharger so it doesn't cause a turbocharger failure. If you have it vented to the atmosphere, you're filtering it for nothing. If the hose size is not adequate for the vent, um, then you're gonna have a backup because the air pressure can't flow through the hose properly. Um, if you have a excessive amount of blow by, of course, if the engine's worn out and your vent is just obviously puking oil, stuff like that, it's gonna be pushing it all back up into this turbocharger and spewing it out one or both seals. So now that I'm off that rant, um, this leads me to my next point. If you have a newer model truck and there's oil in the compressor cover and you have not rerouted your crankcase vent, if it's routed into the front of the intake like the factory intends, um, you will have oil naturally on the compressor of the turbocharger. It's just how the system works. Some oil comes through, gets into the intake, obviously, because it's vented into the intake and goes across the compressor wheel. So uh, if you have an oily compressor wheel and you have a factory CCV on a newer truck, then that's completely normal. Don't worry about it. However, if you have your crankcase vent routed to the atmosphere, if you have an older truck that does not have the crankcase vent routed into the intake, um, and you do have oil on the compressor side, here's a couple of the issues that we see most commonly. The number one cause of that would be when the turbocharger makes a vacuum inside the intake and pulls the oil through the seal. Now, how would this happen? Um, typically, if you have an air filter that's inadequate for the amount of airflow coming through it, so if you have a turbocharger that's much larger or a very large engine and a small air filter that's restrictive, um, this will start pulling so much air that it creates a vacuum and can pull oil directly through the seal. That leads me to my next point, which is dirty air filters. If your air filter is adequately sized, but it's dirty, it may not be letting enough air in, causing it to create a vacuum, doing the same thing. Oil will get into the compressor cover um, and make a mess of things. So that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the turbocharger. It means you need to change your air filter. There's one more point to this. Compound turbochargers. If you have a small charger and a big charger over the top of it, the small charger is going to build boost and start drawing air before the big charger does. That big charger will be under vacuum until it starts building boost because this smaller charger is going to be pulling air through it. That can also cause vacuum on the larger charger pulling oil through the seal. So that is also normal. If you have a compound turbo setup and your large charger has oil on the compressor wheel, that is pretty normal because of the vacuum that the smaller charger creates. So don't be concerned with that. So that rules out the simple and free issues typically to fix um, that may be causing oil in the turbine and in the compressor cover. Uh, the turbine seal sits directly against this little groove. You probably can't see it in the video. Um, and if it does not sit perfectly against that groove, oil will get past it. Um, so what that means is if the turbocharger is improperly uh, assembled if the oil seal has popped off of this little groove that it sits on um, or if you have a thrust bearing failure that groove will no longer seat with that oil seal and you will have an oil leakage issue into the turbine. So to tell if you have a thrust bearing failure you're going to want to check for forward and back shaft play. I have a video that's very in-depth that I'll link below um, that tells you how to check for shaft play to check if your turbocharger has failed. Um, if you have ruled out the oil feed, if you have, or not the oil field, if you read out, ruled out the oil drain, if you've ruled out the crankcase vent and you've ruled out any sort of filter system that has an effect on this, um, then you may want to check for shaft play. All right, so that concludes this video. I hope that helps you diagnose some of your issues on your brand new turbocharger or maybe even on an older turbocharger um, that has oil in the turbine or the compressor wheel. As always, if you have any questions concerning this matter or anything turbocharger related, feel free to give us a phone call. Um, you can also shoot us an email, message us on Facebook, Instagram, any of the social media platforms, um, and we'll be happy to help you. So if you found this content helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button so we can continue to produce content that will help you diagnose your truck.